Don't we just love Streamlabs? Remember to smash the like button again, folks. I, 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 it, it does mean a lot. Especially on these trying days. Very, very trying days. Hello, Aiden06. How are you this evening? I hope you are well. I am going to get to the soldering iron turned on and we are going to start some modelling before Streamlabs closes again. Because I'm sure it will. Because Streamlabs is Streamlabs, yo. So we have Alex's Southeastern and Chat and Tender, which I'm sure will one day look just like this one. That day won't be today, we're just building it for her. That is the way around that goes. I do remember this, honest. Big blob of salt there that can go. Yeah, fine. So what's the question from earlier as to what we'll be paired with? I'm likely putting it with a C class, or if I manage to obtain a 440, I'll put it with that. And no, 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 what? Remind, remind me what was said, I assume, by me. You necessarily are a monster line black, most likely depends on what locomotive it runs behind. Fair enough. Good answer to the question that I forgot I asked. But what you're saying is it won't look as good as mine then, yeah, Alex? Yeah, it still fits. Big block of solder there we're going to remove. That is just really, I thought so. There we go. Dirty modern southern colours. Exactly, Alex. Exactly. So we're going to put plenty of flux on there. Because, of course, you cannot have too much flux. We are going to use Alex's solder since she provided it for me to build this with. You know what you didn't provide, though, Alex? Wheels. That is where that sits. Uh, 
Oh, group Nero, Blackstone, Blanche, set 14 to 30. The old green, Blanche, which I don't know, that's fine. You can put a green, 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 a uh, large amount of overlap with the livery, so I can get my T9 ready to remove those dirty modern colours. Excellent, Lenny. That's what I like to hear. Corporate both group and group group in challenge interior for model, given limited ready to run availability. Sorry, I didn't hear that, Harry. What will you be recoding yours as? Wheels, Alex. Yes, wheels. Turny things. And I honestly don't know that I have any in the pot the right size to put in it. Otherwise, I would. That's not anything to pick up. That's no fun of it. Just drop that there. They're more than just recolouring, I'm unrebuilding my T9 tapping LSWR drum and livery. You are indeed, and it's looking fantastic, really. Proof of wheels. I'm rebuilding a splendid nihilism. Unrebuilt T9 would be a joy. It's quite a project, I imagine, as the modifications were extensive. It, it does look like a rather long project. James, but Linny is doing a fantastic job of it. For those that want to see it, it can be seen. There are pictures of it on my Discord, which you can reach, if you're not a member already, by typing exclamation mark Discord in the chat for a link from the bot. Speaking of, have we tested the bot to make sure it's running on this stream? Because I haven't actually... Um, restarted the bot, which I normally do when the stream crashes. And so the next piece we need, because we're going to do there next, we've got a bit of solder to take off. From the previous build, but so the next piece we need is Alex's tender behind. Because of course it is Alex's tender, so all the parts are hers. Oh yes, there's pic well, the pictures in your RM web thread as up to date though, you know. Do feel free to drop a link to your RM web thread in the chat. Right, well, you being a mod, you can do that. You are quite right, James. The hydration is important. And thank you everyone for um, testing the chat commands for me. You know what, rather than cutting this off, it might be just as easy to melt it down. And remove it with the sucker, which is what was important for they're up to date as of half an hour ago. Ah, oh, excellent. I have not checked your thread in the last half hour.
There we go. Fits nicely now. Obviously it'll need a bit of filler afterwards, but that is to be expected with the kit anyway. You should really expect that with all kits. Never assume you won't need a filler gap or two. Well, I'm mostly embarrassed of my old soldering attempts. I'd like to think it's better now. I'm sure your soldering attempts are much better now, and this one really wasn't that bad. Certainly not as bad as you seem to think it was. And look at how many people are too scared to even attempt soldering white metal in the first place. So, on that basis alone, you did a fine job. This really doesn't want to pick up on my iron. That's all right, we'll do that and separate the piece. Ooh, don't drop it. That would be silly. And may even result in you dropping so much solder that you're going to have to remove it all again. See Alex, nothing to be embarrassed about. Hello back, I am Gary, good to see you. Good evening, Max. How are you this evening? I hope you are well. Are you working on Thursday? You have Linus Locomotive Primed. I do have Linus Locomotive Primed. We are going through various things today. We are starting with a South Eastern Chatham tender that I am doing for the good lady Alex, ABS Railways. There we go, that time we didn't drop it and we've soldered it nicely. Isn't that good? Yes, yes it is. There's a lot to come off this bit.
You're doing well, Max. That is good to hear. I am going to clear the solder out of the sucker. That appears to have got it all. So now that Max has arrived, I best ask the most important question that I know he's dying for me to ask already. Anyone else got any projects on the go? What are we working on? Please do tell me. I do love to know. Now, I've just emptied this, it's already blocking up. Oh, that's come out. There we go, we got that big piece. And there's the bot wanting to advertise my Twitter account. I am wiring and running out of wood screws. One of those things is better than the other, James. Since you're not working on one of the ladies loco, I thought I would slowly slowing down that 040 again. Yeah, excellent. Afraid structural count has gotten in the way of my projects, oh that's unfortunate, heavy air, but these things do indeed happen to us all, don't they? My parents have allowed me to have a straight line, a five inch gauge track at the back of my garden. I've been working on that today. Oh, that is excellent news. Excellent news indeed. I too would be working on a five inch loco if I had had news like that. Although if I were to go to the larger stuff it would be seven and a quarter so that you could run at Bentley. Trying to bring dreams and available space together in Scar. No, nah, dreams never fit available space. Yes, lot drum work right now. Hard to hear you finishing up on my L and Y Percy F. It's pub kit bashing chassis to work with it. Model power engines, rather exciting. Excellent, Max. I am very glad to hear that. Very glad indeed. It is a a lovely project. I look forward to seeing pictures of it sometime. I assume they will be going on Twitter. Let's see how well we fit together now. Almost. We almost fit together. Where is my little pile? There it is. We will just flatten down this edge. And we should be good to go. That was silly, but it also fit. So that's something. Can 
there's a lot of flux on there still, I'm going to wipe that off. I don't think I actually got around to soldering that properly, did I? I only kind of tapped it on, that would be why it fell off. Silly me. I would say, have you ever had one of those days where, but let's be honest, we all know none of you have ever had one of those days where you've got a circular saw for your central heating. Because not many people have those days, do they? D7 quarter is a wonderful scale, although a large garden would be needed. Yeah, that is indeed the problem, isn't it? Heritage Railway production, the garden space. I, I couldn't even run five inch in my garden, so it's not a problem. As I say, Bentley would be the place to run it. Yes, very much so when I get it running. Excellent. That is what I like to hear, Matt. I will look forward to seeing it. Basic idea, if it's okay, still have a problem with the mainline station. I mean, that's better than what I usually get when I'm trying to fit dreams into an available space. Yeah, I can't say that I have, no. Didn't think so, Jane. Do upload it somewhere so that suggestions can be made. Well, I have the ideal place for uploading and discussing suggestions. It is my Discord server. <laughs> All the plugs. I love my Discord server. The community is amazing. You should definitely check it out if you haven't already. That actually goes that way round. See though, other than the fact there's a little blooming bump there, it fits as we want it to. I'm actually going to stick these on before I stick that back in. I probably should have stuck these on in the first place anyway, really. But you know me. And today. It's one of those days where I'd rather be playing with something I can repair. My garden is almost entirely filled with sheds, so no outside railway would fit at all, more or less. Well, mine will be filled with shed, to the most part. At the moment, it's not. But it will be. Less grass to cut that way, you see. Room of shed filling gardens, no lawn smoke. Exactly, James. That is what I like about them. I did think they were supposed to have lugs on them. Yes, I remember now. I assume you me th th these lugs have been melted off. Or at least half off. which would explain the difficulty in their shape. But I do believe that this is this one, yes.
need to fetch debit card to order screws. Be right back. Well, you won't miss much, James. Honestly. I'm going to trim the solder off of these. And I'm going to attempt to clear out these. Have to be five inch gauge because the locomotive I'm building is rust on 48 and they're pretty small so it'll be tight squeeze to fit in the battery in a moving space less than 15 centimetres wide. I mean, Ormby managed it. Okay, not quite the same, but that's not the point. I have, of course, seen the initial bits of your Rustum. I was a bit overzealous there. <laughs> you, you were a little bit, Alex. But it is not a problem. Not at all. Oh, that's still sticking out a bit far there. That's what it is. Right, we're basically there. That's not the one I want. Ooh, 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 funny. I'm going to have to empty this again. Right, I do believe I've got it all. No, no I haven't. A rather large bit stuck there. There we go. It was that large a bit that was stuck there.
Screws ordered. Excellent, James. Glad to hear it. More modelling work. If it can continue, the better. I found lots of kids that were holding up the boys' layout earlier whilst putting all my tools away that I had used. So he is very happy about that. And it does, of course, mean there will be more updates coming from his layout in the near future. Are these drill bits too big? I think they probably are, yes. That would have been nice and convenient for clearing out this bearing hole if they weren't. Let's make sure this fits in place. A bit of solder to scrape out this hole. Yeah, right, I think I should try to use normal soldier on the axe for boxes. Ah! I won't be soldering them free then. Yeah, I'm not cranking the temperature up enough for that. I will melt the axle boxes. There's not enough metal there. That's going to be a drill and out job. There's still a little bit in here, I can actually see it. There's a little bump on either side. You can cheekily ask Lily if they'll print an axle retainer like they did for their GBL. You could. You could do that. They don't go up to big enough, they only go up to 1.6 mil. But I do believe we need somewhere about 2.5 to 3. And these ones are slightly too big at 3.2. So they are the size of the hole in here, but not of the hole in the actual axle box which is what you filled up. Um, what else have I got? I will have something to do it with. I mean it's round now at least. Look better already. Laser cut, but I might have brief access to the cutter. So if you let me know the wheelbase, I can have going. Oh, the 
and the axle diameter. All we need to do is get it big enough to hold a pinpoint bearing and it will be fine. Bit like that, see pinpoint bearing fits in there. Now I don't believe you can actually leave pinpoint bearings in these, I think they're slightly too close together for them. But that confirms that the hole at the front, which is fine, and the hole at the back are now the same size. So that little spin with my screwdriver did the trick. It's all sorted. If at first you don't succeed, bodge and bodge again. No, my knife won't cut that well. I really need to order some more blades. Well, that's been quite going half like I wanted, but never mind. Let's put some flux down. And drop some solder on. And there we go. It's all coming up, Millhouse. And that is looking like a, quite a good fit there. There's a little bump on here that needs sorting. And then I do believe that is it. Yes. That is looking good.
Yes, please, as Lily says, do remember to smash the like button for this part of the stream. As I say, I will be looking at the viewer numbers and the likes and everything later as a way of cheering myself up. And honestly, it really won't matter what they say. It'll matter that the viewer numbers and the likes exist in the first place. I mean, it would have been nice if we hadn't have lost a subscriber a couple of days before the video that I put the most work into literally ever, but there we go. Some figures are good, some are bad. Just like days. And people. Yes, welcome back, Max. Didn't even know you were gone. No, who needed him? Well, yeah, there is that. But honestly, I lose subscribers all the time. The overall trend is a game is gaming, so that's what matters to me. I am exactly on where I want it to be, channel growth wise. So I am happy. For those that don't know, I do keep track of where subscribers are and where I want it to be. And my plan, my goal was 250 subscribers before the end of April 2020. And here we are, just before the end of April 2020, and I'm working on my 250 subscriber special, because we've hit it. I should stress that it wouldn't actually bother me if I didn't make any of my targets. I'm not trying to do this for a living. It's a hobby. Good evening, Luke. Welcome to the stream. Happy birthday, young child. I hope you are well. Everyone sing happy birthday to the birthday boy, please. Every year, Luke has a birthday and turns seven again. You are well, that is excellent, Luke. I am glad to hear it.
There is a lot of work to do to this. I'm guessing, Alex, that this was um, done with regular solder as well. We are very international this evening, aren't we, Paderborn? Um, I don't speak German, which I'm assuming is what it is. Care to enlighten me? I'm assuming it's a happy birthday or something. Even context. You really did do a number on these frames, Alex. But it's nothing we can't fix. Hearty congratulations. Heartfelt wishes to your birthday. Ah, excellent. Thank you very much. It is good to be enlightened on these things. I say my, my inability to speak foreign languages is not because I don't want to speak them. I would love to be able to speak many, many languages. Unfortunately, it is something I have always struggled in. Make mistakes, translations is an art, not a science. Well, there you go, Linny, no mistakes. And, and that obviously will be a happy birthday in Welsh. So these are the sorts of messages where we can ignore my rule about foreign languages because if it's in context and I can understand what it means even only roughly in context then it's not breaking the rule Because the rule does only exist so that I can understand what's being said. I'm 
I mean, I can moderate in Italian, French, and a bit of German. Well, that's okay then. As long as you're here, I don't mind people speaking those languages because it is to do with, you know, if you can moderate in it, then it's fine. <laughs> We are mostly square, there's a couple of bits to shave down, but it's not too bad at all. I can moderate the chat in Anglo-Saxon, but I don't see it coming up often, to be honest. Good evening, A1. How are you? I hope you are well. I'm going to take a brief break to remind everyone hydration is important. Um, interesting question, A1. I'm going to go with I'm okay considering. It's been a very interesting day. Yes, we are all at square. I'm just going to quickly deal with this because that looks like real solder as well. Ah, oh, there we go. So it does come up occasionally. <laughs> I assume you had to go and look that up. But very good, Adderborn. I did once upon a time actually open the live stream and do my hello everybody welcome to let's build in Anglo-Saxon. I can't remember what stream it was but it has happened before. And of course, when doing greetings in Anglo-Saxon, it gets really complicated.
the spelling, yes. Fair enough. So I sometimes have to look up the spellings. Weird not being the only one that knows Anglo-Saxon here. Ah, this is Ben, that's what it is. It was starting to confuse me. And I think when I opened the stream in Anglo-Saxon, it's the last time I actually spoke it. So anyone that was here for that, you were the last people to hear me speak Anglo-Saxon. I know a bit, try reading Beowulf once, fails. Understandable. I learned Anglo Saxon when I was taking English at college, and my English teacher was a rather inspiring man. Who sat and did things like reading us Chaucer in its native tongue. And it inspired me to go and learn class the classical language so that I could appreciate these things better. No, we were backwards in Hastings, but oh, I didn't think we were Anglo-Saxon backwards. <laughs> Tell you what, the man was incredible. Easily the best teacher I ever had for anything. That's just tacked on at the top there. Let's make sure we've actually got it straight this time. Yes, that's better. See, and that is what's good about soldering kits. Have a problem, just unsolder it. I know that spoken English is based on English and written English is based on 
west axis, which is why we write and spell diff uh, write and speak differently. Indeed, some of us fail to speak at all at times. There's the chatbot giving us a link to Patreon. I honestly don't know if my alert box goes off if someone signs up to Patreon midstream. I don't think it's ever happened. I know my donation one does, and I love that. I love it when that alert box goes off. These are not hints to try and get you to donate or sign up to Patreon, in case you're wondering, everyone. Just general observations. Oh, don't catch the camera stem with the soldering iron. Do not hold the hot end of the solder rod that you've just put the iron against. Hot end of the soldering iron rod. It's hot. Shocking news, I know. And there we go. See, we're nice and square. Fits in perfect. So, two things you need for soldering are heat and cleanliness. Obviously, with white metal soldering, you need a lack of heat as well as heat. Quite an odd one, that, but true. 
Well, tomorrow's off to bed now. Good night. Oh, yes, no, yeah, no. good night, Paderborn. Thank you for coming. It has been great to have you here. Sleep well, and we shall speak again soon, I hope. The trick here is to use as little solder as possible and to flow it all into the gap. There we go. That's that side done. I think we're starting to look like a South Eastern and Chatham tender now. Looking very tidy. I'm glad you think so, Alex. Hurrah, I've got my splasher sandbox drawn up now for the firebox, which is going to be a real fiddle. Were hay for sandboxes, not so were hay for real fiddle. Oh, too much pressure. I'm just trying to hold you upright, not throw you over. Thank you, Linny. Let's cut this little bit in half because we only want about half of that. 
despite it being an absolutely tiny piece of solder. Get the right way up so your flat side is on the glass. A lovely tender, thank you, Corbs. She's certainly coming along very nicely. I can't quite mass produce them like you can, though. There we go, just use that excess to do that. Although, if you ever feel the need to alter your moulds, corbs, the tenders have a flat top. I wonder if subconsciously your work on those uh, those resin tenders is what's inspired me to have this as the first project that's come out when I needed something different. Yep, that's all good. Let's get some flux on it all. That wants to go that way round.
Oh, like the box telling us hydration is important. It is that time. So it's weird having young Mr. Mole not here to alert us that it's time to hydrate. But he's not well, he did send in a note from his doctor excusing him from the stream. So with that bit now attached, let's take the chat box advice and hydrate. Of course I will first have to refill the hydration vessel. So, as the box says, remember kids, hydration is important. Clean the edges of that up. Try and not get it in an angle, strength would be better. That's better. See, we're looking like a proper tender now. Not much left to do at all. Well, I do believe this has to go in first. Yes, because this drops down into it. Like that.
not that we've done really really dirty but that really just needs a knife to clean it that tender is looking tenderish thank you james it is indeed looking rather good i am very happy with how it's coming along And judging by her comments, I do believe the good lady is quite happy with how it's coming along. These are, after all, her tender parts. I'll get the primer ready. I'll get the primer ready. Well, these things don't take long when you've got to sit down and work on nothing else for three hours. There's been a bit more clean up than I anticipated, but in general, it's been a very nice build, all things considered. No, don't move. <laughs> Go. Oh, I went hard quicker than I expected. No, they're not sticking to this very well. That's fine. Let's give it a bit more of a polish. And then, of course, add a bit more flux. That's better. Exactly, James. You can't have too much flux. So now we want to get, now that that bit's in, this slides down into it. So we want to get this bit in next.
Would you believe I've soldered it in slightly too far back? Did you use flux in your searchless or mishap repair? I did use flux in my searchless or mishap repair. I did not use too much of it, and do you know why I didn't use too much of it? Because you can't have too much of it. That's about how far we want to move it forwards. Yes, that's much better now. Much better indeed. Looks like. <laughs> it was a bit like that. How is everyone doing? Hopefully, are all still good. I hope we are all still. Oh, we are all nice and relaxed and enjoying the stream, along with all our other projects we've got going on. Tend to twist it a little, I'm not sure if it's how the camera is picking it up. Um, I don't believe it is. It certainly sits flat on my block as I try and wobble it. I've run out of screws so and painted some 3D printed models for a club layout. Oh, very nice. Very nice indeed. Everything looks square to the Mark I eyeball. Kind of warm at the moment. Hello, Thomas. How are you this evening? I believe we're all kind of warm at the moment. It's certainly warm here. And of course, when it's warm, it means hydration is even more important.
probably just the camera perspective then. Hopefully it is. Yes, as I say, I, it doesn't seem to be twisted. No, we're basically a tender at this point. Um, how do I get that back out to apply flux? I mean, I know it fits now, so that's good. Oh, that bit came off. That appears to have been glued on, which would explain why it didn't come apart. In the boiling water. I actually just polished off a carton of orange juice. I'm coping, been clearing out a house, many memories. Well, I'm glad to hear you've just polished off a carton of orange juice. That is the correct way to hydrate. many memories. I hope there are many good memories there. Because of course I do, I do understand what you're saying. So I hope it is many good memories and you have had a time reminiscing the incorrect way being with a circular saw. Indeed, James, the incorrect way to hydrate is with a circular saw. You should try and keep circular saws away from all forms of hydration vessel. Be they ones you drink from or pipes under your floorboards. I mean, also, if you keep your house in the design spec and don't start modifying it and building walls and stuff, you might not actually have to take a circular saw to your floorboards to lift them. So there's always that as well. Top tip, don't build a wall. All good memories. Also, I do love me some orange juice. Two or three castles a day if I could. Probably not a good idea, though. Ah, just a bit of vitamin C overload. I'm sure it'll be fine. Gary does not advise vitamin C overload. I hear it can actually be quite a problem. I can't remember why. But I'm sure I remember hearing too much vitamin C is a bad idea. Vitamin C is very hard to overdose. That's okay then. I wonder what one it was I heard that is easy to overdose. Because obviously it wasn't vitamin C. Other vitamins are far more problematic in high doses, e.g. vitamin A. So I've certainly heard that there was something that was very problematic. 
vitamin wise. I thought it was C. Obviously not. Look at the difference in the areas you polish against the areas you don't. Extremely high doses of this soon taken over a very long time can cause nerve damage from those or extreme cases. No, I don't think it was that I heard about. I mean, it's possible, but I don't think so. But thank you, Jay. Knowledge is power. And power is faith. I mean, the, the, the original line would be money is power, but obviously that doesn't quite fit with the song, uh, with what I was saying. If you can name the song, I'll be impressed. I'm sure there must be at least one person out there that knows it. I could be very wrong though. Oh, yeah. What would you say is the best gauge to work with? Hello, the channel of Ben. I personally am a double O gauge man. I find it easy to work with, easy to see, the size is convenient for working on. Of course, outside the UK, the closest equivalent would be HO, which is what I would choose in non-UK um, circumstances. But yes, welcome to the channel, and how are you? I hope you are well. All my stuff is double O or its equivalent narrow gauge, which is double O nine. But of course, it really depends on what you want, and I'm sure. Other people in the chat of the financial doing some modeling research. Ah, fair enough. I'm sure there's other people in the chat that could give you very different answers. Oh, 
show again. I thought I'd pop back in to see how your tender is going. It is looking very, very tendery. Really, I am quite happy with it. Thank you for popping back in. I hope you are doing well and all that good stuff. I like M, but it's difficult for pre 1950s periods due to limited availability of rolling stock. See, I, I knew you'd be there as the voice for Engage, James. Almost done with the major construction, they just had to suffer. Looks like you're making great progress with the kit. I would like to think so, Max. It's certainly going together very, very nicely. Good, thanks you. I am not too bad. Which, I say that every time I'm streaming, and I'll be honest, even when I'm in a fair mood beforehand, sitting here doing some modelling and chatting to all of you, always puts me in a great mood. You are wonderful people. Everyone of you. Right then. We have a brake stand up to fit. Which fits very nicely. We have buffers to fit. We have the front bit to fit, we have a pipe to fit. I only seem to have a single guard iron. So we might not have guard irons to fit, but other than that, that is the kit done. Once we've done that lot, James Hurts, I'm seriously considering more the early BR diesel to the LNL 4849 because there's not a lot of stock for that time period, but there's loads of early diesels. What do you mean could help me? I've been struggling through Google and cannot for the life of me find who actually owns the rights to K's kits anymore. We can indeed help. K's kits are now owned by. Newcast Partners, which is a joint venture between Southeastern Finecast and Branch Lines, the information for which you can find, uh, the contact information for which you can find on the Southeastern Finecast website, sefinecast.co.uk. And if you can contact South Eastern Finecast or Branch Lines, either of them will be able to help you with inquiries there. So I have a few case kits myself that I have built on the live stream. And I've only built one case. Well, no, I've built a few case. I've built Lion. I've built some of the. London Brighton and South Coast carriages and I've also in a video series built the Brighton K class from K's.
and they are fantastic models to work with. Sprung buffers? No, I, I, I was not provided sprung buffers. It's not my tender, so it will get built as it was provided to me by the good lady, Alex. There we go, that is in nicely. Wonderful stuff, thank you. Ken Kaiser was my grandfather, so looking into design next generation models. Oh, wow. Very cool indeed. Well, if you hang on there for a second. We have... <laughs> the K's K class and the K's Lion done up as the Tipfield Thunderbolt which just happened to be on the layout behind me so yes two very nice kits that I very much enjoyed building the details of their builds can be found in the history of the channel. They're, they're wonderful, I'm glad you think so. They were fantastic builds, I really did enjoy them. I don't think I have any more K's kits to build at the moment, but I certainly would like to look into some more in the future. Because I did have so a very good time working on them. My dad used to help on production lines. We found so many plans and models in the garage when clearing them out. Oh wow, that is that is amazing. Alas for now, I shan't be fitting strong buffers. I intend on using Dingham couplings. They apparently prefer rigid buffers, but we shall see if I do need to replace them. There we go, Max. There is an answer to your strong bufferage. Yeah, that is very, very interesting to hear. I would love to hear more about the behind the scenes of K's. I don't think that's sticking up well, is it? Oh, maybe it is. Oh, that is not sticking up, but it shouldn't be there at all. And that's probably the best thing I've heard in two months. It is it has an amazing thing to hear. And it is amazing to have you joining the channel and joining us in the chat. There we go, that's better. That's how it's meant to be. Great to know that my dad is a low key legend. <laughs> Indeed. Car, you set off the chatbot, Alex. Um. I don't know if I can even restore things by the chatbot. I cannot restore things that the chatbot has purged. That's interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. So that is really interesting to hear, Ben. Please, if you have any more 
info about the behind the scenes. We'd love to hear it. I'm sure it's not just me here that would love to hear it. A great place for model railway information. I'm totally going to plug this now with a very knowledgeable bunch of people who are always willing to help where they can and in some cases are actually quite good friends with the manufacturers or even are the manufacturers. We have a couple of them in there is my Discord server, a link to which can be got by putting exclamation mark Discord into the chat. There it is. I had lost where I put my solder for my flux applicator. God, that makes it sound posh, doesn't it? And not like the nozzle for a super glue. I'll definitely collect what I can. I'm happy to sort out with everything so it's all coming unboxed to see what's there. Oh, wow. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Heard about discussion about strong buffers and understood in regards. Excellent, Max. Excellent indeed. I think to take solder, but doesn't really need it to be honest. So I have two buffers and a pipe to attach. Is there a way I can look on the Discord server without signing up? Unfortunately, not, Harry. You do have to sign up to Discord to be able to use the Discord services. They do not allow public viewing of the servers. I'm off to sleep. Thank you so much for your help. The model looks great. Speak soon. I'll take photos of everything in the time and send them to you all. That is excellent. Well, good night, Ben. Thank you for coming by. It has been very interesting hearing from you, and I will look forward to those pictures. Take care. Guessing painting linear's kit will be now. I assume there will be SE Umber or improved engine green. I will not be painting Linny's kit. Linny's kit, Linny's D1 will be going back to Linny in primer as that is what Linny has specified. And Linny's a much better painter than me anyway. 
However, Linny will be doing either a video or a live stream painting said kit. There, you can find a link to Linny's channel on the home page of my YouTube channel. Or, Linny, if you're still about, you can post a link. You are still here. Okay, excellent. You can then post a link to promote your YouTube channel if you so wish as it has come up. I'm sure once the D1 is finished, many people would like to see it taken to fruition. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, that's my surprise, I thought the channel's not already tried. And there you go, there is a link to Linny's channel. No problem, guys. Excellent, excellent, excellent. More subscribers for the Linny. So this pipe is the last piece that I can really add. And then we are done with this kit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that.
we have built something in a single evening. But the bot wants us to remember hydration is important. See what I'm up there. But there we have a South Eastern and Chatham tender. All nice and finished. This is the thing that was my attempt to mind it, just working on two different projects. It's confusing. Yeah, I I had to take a break from the D1, unfortunately, Max. Many reasons. So we switched over to doing this tender for the good lady, Alex. It can now be posted back to her. Two and a quarter hours for a clean up and build, I don't think is bad at all. It's slightly longer than I expected, but there was slightly more to clean up than I expected. But it is ready to go. I'm going to drop the brakes in here. I can't add them without the wheels, unfortunately. But that is one South Eastern Chatham tender. I hope you are happy, Alex. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to punch the camera because, you know, Ever the professional. I'm going to put the flux away because we are done with the solder for the evening. We have 45 minutes left, which is a decent amount of time. all the soldering stuff away because I can and I have sat over here something I received the other day out of the blue I was well not out I was expecting a delivery I was not expecting this to come with it and we have a POW size kit for a white and beanie coal wagon who were the coal who were one of the coal merchants in Hailsham. Not everyone will get the significance of that, but for those that do, it is quite significant. So yes, it is. I believe they are a, um, I want to say Slater's kits that they use. They want me to use Humbrol number 33. I don't have all the chassis. I'm not a fan of using Humbro 33 anyway, it is too black. I believe it's a Slater's kit. Yeah, I'm, 
I, I really want to say it's Slater's they use for their kits. And I have built a Slater's wagon before. It does all look familiar. Yes, look, that's a photocopy of the Slater's instructions. So it is indeed a Slater's kit. Lovely, it's like to build it, no doubt, pulled by the marvellous Craven. I mean, I have a whole rake of white and beanie wagons that can be pulled by the marvellous Craven. Have a yeah, but you are indeed correct as to one as to reasons for significance. Um, Rob Burton for just matte black, but it'll match the body size. He is indeed matte black, but I don't like matte black, it's too black. I prefer the very dark grey, which won't quite match the body size, but with a bit of weathering, should look fine. And it needs a heavy weathering anyway. Seven plank wagon, I assume? I believe so, yes. Indeed, it is seven planks. I had to find somewhere I could actually see the number of planks. So this is a end door, I believe, which is this wagon here. So yes, adding another white and beanie to the collection will be great. Okay, I'll get some Humbrol 33 to touch these bits up. I went for years wanting a white and beanie wagon. I believe this is now my fifth one. And of course my under construction exhibition layout is Hailsham. So having a nice selection of white and beanie wagons to populate the goods yard will be very nice indeed.
But it's very weird that they use Sphator's wagon still. If the reason Slater's 4 mil range disappeared was because they sold exclusive rights to produce it and sell it to Coopercraft. Luckily that was a limited time deal. A time limit which has now run out and Slaters are slowly reintroducing the range under their own name because for some reason they didn't want to renew the contract with Cooper Craft. I can't imagine why. I wouldn't possibly want to speculate on what could have gone wrong for them to not want Cooper Craft being the manufacturers and sellers of their stuff. But it does mean I find it very amazing that POW sides were able to get their hands on Slater's four mil kits. this side and that'll go under there yep perfect There we go, when you're building these kits, if you build them around the floor, it keeps everything square. Oh no! That oh no was from throwing the lid to the glue pot around. I do not recommend throwing the lid from the glue pot around. Oh 
and there we have a wagon body. This is our end door hinge. Which goes just on the inside of the door, I believe. Let's double check the instructions. Yes, inside top edge of the end door. And there we go, there is the hinge to the end. So that bit can open, so we then have what look to me to be wooden soul bars. There's my wheel pot. I, left, I had it out earlier, didn't I? Oh dear, I seem to be lacking in pairs of wheels. I'm not using disc wheels, I'm not using mounts or wheels. I really need to get a more organised wheel storage solution. But there we have some wheels. You are not the bearings I was looking for. I was looking for the good ones. There's the good ones. Because of course with a kit like this it's always improved by the addition of some brass bearings. Capable of opening that out for bearing size. There's some bearings in there, and we shall open out the other side and send everything flying, including all the bearings. That was helpful, wasn't it? There we go. 
two bearings. Remember folks, don't slip. And be prepared for slipping. Especially if you're working on something at an angle. My chat's gone very quiet. How are we all doing? Well, don't punch the camera. Punching the camera is not recommended. That's the buffer heads. Ah, I see. It is only Streamlabs that my chat has crashed on. My last message I saw on Streamlabs was Mac saying, oh nice. So, I believe PRW's eyes actually paint and letter the wagon to order, so they probably have plenty in stock. I believe they do, you're quite right. It's an indoor one, make sure you get the sides the right way round. I did. Are those pre-printed sides? How does that work? PO sides do draw PO wagons and they will apply them for you. Yes, as Lily said there. Guess they just cut out the assembly part of the RTR process. A little bit, yes, cool. So you can order a kit with a lettering already on it. Interesting, those are well applied. So there's a lot of been around lettering transfer, I dare say. Proof of wheel storage solution. I'm off to bed. Thanks for the stream. Good night, Aiden. You're probably already gone by the time I'm reading this because of Streamlabs crashing the chat. And well, I've finished painting. Excellent, James. Thinking of making transfers for seat motive in Engage. Wow. Uh, let's see if I can fix this chat. Right, that looks fixed. Could someone please drop me a message to confirm so that I can check that that's actually fixed? Because that is annoying that Streamlabs has done that and I missed all those messages. You must have all thought I was ignoring you. Excellent, thank you James. And there is the bot responding. I say the bot was still working because I've actually just gone onto the bot to read all those messages. So yes, thank you for confirming I have indeed fixed that. Stupid Streamlabs. Hey, <laughs> cake, the cake is a lie. Thank you, Heritage Railway Productions. Very much appreciated. So I wasn't ignoring you all on purpose, I was ignoring you all because Streamlabs wanted me to ignore you. Now, I opened Streamlabs to do some recording yesterday, I believe, and it did an update. I took a screenshot of that update process so I could post it to Twitter. My exact words on Twitter were, this is the scariest screen a streamer has ever seen. You never know if all your hard work, I think I just said work actually, creating scenes and setting hotkeys is going to work, be broken by the time it finishes. Oh Streamlabs, we don't love you but please never change, it's too scary when you do. And what we have there, ladies and gentlemen, is Streamlabs updating 
and breaking itself. Almost like I predicted it. Stupid stream wraps. Updating and breaking. Every time I look up and see that messages haven't changed now, I'm going to be paranoid that it's because Streamlabs have broken again. Although I've been running these streams on my laptop for four months now, and that's the first time that Streamlabs has broken the chat. So good going Streamlabs. Well done for lasting four months. That's the thing you're supposed to just sit and do. It's not really acceptable if I'm being honest. I'm in Streamlabs. So now that these are nice and cleaned up, they go a like a soul. And you get one glued in place and then you put the wheels in to glue the second in place. I've built Slater's wagons before, but only older pattern ones. This is, I believe, an RCH 1923. It is indeed. And I'm pretty sure the last Slater's I built was an RCH 1907, which is significantly smaller than this. And it was one that was available from Slater's directly once upon a time with pre-done sides. Um, James Meakin and Son. Bedtime for me too. Nearly night night all you I think. You as always you know, thank you Corbs for coming. Has been great to have you here. Good night. Sleep well. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. It runs. It rolls backwards because the glass is obviously slightly sloped. Now, I could be wrong here, but this is how I'm going to build it anyway. But that looks to me like a single set of brakes and a handle on both sides. It's probably not. Being a 1923 wagon, it's probably brakes on both sides. If someone who knows these things better than me wants to jump in and let me know, I might build it with both. So 
much flash. This one's just as bad. I mean, it would be they're off the same mould, aren't they? Woo, free rolling. Exactly, Alex. Free rolling is the best kind of rolling. And that is why we put brass pinpoint bearings. Because we wouldn't get that same level of free rolling. if it was just the plastic of the kit against the wheels. It is quarter to midnight. We are very nearly finished for the evening. Well, that fits in there very nicely. I remember this from the last one. They sit in there and it holds them very nicely by the wheels. But you've got to get them all the way in for it to hold them nicely by the wheels. And of course the good thing about gluing If you can, in the majority of cases, get things in place first. And if they hold themselves, you can leave them there. I'm going to put both sets of brakes on. It seems right for 1923 to me. Got it rolling? Yeah, I did indeed, Max. I did indeed. Let's not be the side of blue in the caption it, I don't think it is.
One of these sides is definitely more free rolling than the other. Oh, it is, I see it now. It's slightly too far back and it's pressing on the flange. Silly. Never mind, eh? It still rolls really freely. You don't want them too free. Because if you lay out sitting at an angle, they'll run away. Look at that, the brake candle even sits nicely on its own without glue. It is 10 to midnight. We are at a stage that can only be described as nearly there, both for the wagon and the stream. I like to think that despite everything, this has been a rather good live stream and has been a rather good ending to what was not the greatest of days. And I feel that having this finished can only stand to make that an even better live stream. So we best get that done, eh? There is our brake gear in place. We will not be fitting the um, false coupling hooks.
of the part here. I'm just trying to see how it fits. Right, I see how that fits now. These are the door springs. I've no idea if that's the right word. I should read what it says. Yep, door stop spring. I see no way of cutting that out that doesn't completely destroy it. These fit in between the V hangers. So that when the door is swung open, it hits the spring and stops rather than smashing into the V hanger. Awkward holding these the right way to get them to cut, you know. Because they're so tiny, oh, that snap now. There we go, they really are super tiny. But I should be able to stick them together with a bit of glue. So, as we enter the last few minutes of the stream, I must ask who is still with us? I see we've still got nine viewers, which I feel is a good number for this time. All we have left to do on here is to attach the buffers. We still have a linny. We still have a Heritage Railway Productions. And a Harry. And a James. Car. Oh. Working on Bournemouth Blue. Ooh. Yes, as Linny says, do remember to smash that like button before we close out. God, I don't remember these falling all the way in before. Right, they're looking splendid. Thank you.
And if we've only the buffers left to fit, it would seem a shame to end without doing it, wouldn't it? Even though it is now midnight. That didn't go all the way in. And there we go, with that bit of glue, that is the white and beanie wagon kit from POW size built. That took us about 45 minutes. I think that was quite good going, really. We also have see the South Eastern Chatham tender that we built for Lady Alex, and that is it. We have reached the end of the stream, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a fantastic way to end the day after the issues I've had. Thank you, Javier. So yes, we have two kits built on a single stream. It's been a while since we've done multiple kits. Actually, oh, for goodness sake, we're not getting a great focus. Let's put that behind, see if that improves it. I think that has improved it straight away. Any chance of close up of a D1? Well, since you asked so nicely, I suppose we could manage that. Let's put this down and use both hands. Isn't she fantastic? You can tell I only sprayed the primer today because there's bits missing. But she has come together really, really well. I need to repair the cab interior that I um, broke whilst taking it to spray. So yes, thank you for coming everyone. You have been absolutely fantastic as always. You really have made my evening. I'm sure that doesn't surprise you to hear that by now. I've really enjoyed sitting here modelling with yourselves. D1 Fastlane, all oh, lovely, thank you, not a problem. You see what I mean about all those apparent lumps suddenly going away with a coat of primer? Because it's just where the light reflected differently off the solder. It's amazing how, quite how bad that does look. So yes, thank you for coming. You have been fantastic as always. I have been Gary, this has been Let's Build, and good night everybody.